how things have changed. Remember when Peter Dutton was all about banning TikTok for national security reasons? Well, fast forward to 2024 and guess who's now sliding into your TikTok feed? Dishing out housing advice like a mate over a beer. Yep, good old battler Dutton himself. Now the irony hopefully is not lost on anyone. But this just isn't a case of a politician trying to be hip. It's part of a much bigger, well-oiled machine of political manipulation and influence. TikTok is now the newest weapon in the Liberal Party's media war chest. Now, Peter Dutton, the man who once called TikTok exploitative and a threat to national security, is now suddenly concerned about your home ownership dreams. In his very first post, he's talking about the housing market, promising that life doesn't have to be about renting forever. I know my first TikTok is supposed to be something fun, and I probably should say something that is or isn't demure. But I really joined TikTok for one reason. It's to tell you that we do not have to live in a country where you spend your whole life renting. Owning a home is not just financially a smart decision, but also a truly foundational part of your life. And I get it. There are more exciting things on TikTok than listening to me talking about housing. But Labor's inability to balance migration and build enough homes is killing the Australian dream for an entire generation. Let's face it, this isn't about solving the housing crisis. It's about softening his image, tapping into younger voters, and weaponizing a platform he once wanted off of our phones. Despite decades of his party's policies leading to our current housing crisis. So why the sudden change of heart? It's not like TikTok magically stopped collecting our data or that Chinese ownership is no longer a problem. It's because young voters live there and the Liberal Party can't afford to ignore them any longer. Just as Labor did in 2022, the Liberals see TikTok as a key to influencing the politically disengaged to sway voters and most importantly, those who won't turn to traditional media. It's not just Dutton jumping on the TikTok bandwagon. High profile members of the party are also having their shot at spruiking their half truths and selected facts. Great job Angus loves his little clipboard of statistics. So uh, let's check out the claims that he's making. Well, if you're feeling poorer, it's because you are poorer. This chart shows changes in disposable incomes over the last two years. Notice anything, Australia at the top here has seen disposable incomes going backwards. In fact, Australia's real disposable incomes have fallen more than any other advanced country in the world. Now look, we can see this article that he is referencing, but the short of it is that this article only focuses on one metric, disposable income. And with there being a housing crisis and exponentially larger mortgages for homeowners, Australia is in a unique position of having most of their disposable income going to their rent or mortgage. However, if you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, you'll see that Australia is doing better than most countries in the OECD, at least when it comes to the economy. Now this is not to cheerlead for Labor of course, but you have to have a realistic approach when looking at facts like these. Looking at the exact same OECD reports that Angus is referring to, we can see that Australian inflation is below the OECD average. Growth has continued to rise and household wealth is some of the highest in the world. Now just check out this report by Alan Austin on the website. By most metrics, we are doing pretty well compared to the rest of the world. So what Angus and his mates are not telling you is that Rome was not built in a day. A lot of these problems have been inherited from the previous Liberal government, and while there's valid critiques of Labor's approach, compared to all available data from the OECD, Australia is doing relatively well. Now look, Dutton's hypocrisy is glaring. Just months ago, he wanted to ban TikTok outright, calling it a data gobbling threat, linking it to the Chinese government control and implying it endangered our national security. Now he's all smiles and sound bites, conveniently ignoring those concerns in favor of reaching younger Australians. Why? Because it works. TikTok is the perfect vehicle for political messaging wrapped up in entertainment, a platform where Dutton can rebrand himself as relatable and in touch with the youth, even while his own party's policies are against the interests of young Australians. Now let's look at these claims. 
Australia's housing crisis stems from a combination of policy missteps over decades, mostly perpetuated by the Liberal Party, although Labor is not free from blame here. The reduction of public housing, tax incentives like negative gearing, capital gains tax cuts, have driven speculative investment in housing, pushing property prices beyond the reach for many. Look, migration is part of the problem, but migration policies up until recently were practically identical between the two parties. Dutton only wants to weaponize it to win political points. Now for many, TikTok is about appearing authentic. And this is the game that Dutton's trying to play here. His first video was a simple straight to camera piece where he tries to appear approachable, a stark contrast to the highly polished Liberal Party ads. But don't be fooled, this isn't about authenticity. It's carefully crafted political theater. Ever since Scotty from Marketing, I'll have to admit that the coalition media team are masterminds of carefully crafted advertising. And it also helps that they have the majority of the press backing them as well. It's no secret that the Liberal Party is struggling with younger voters. Millennials and Gen Z uh, haven't exactly embraced them with open arms. So, hence the adoption of uh, third parties like the Greens. So Dutton's move onto TikTok is as much about damage control as it is about outreach. If they can't win over a fraction of these voters with policy, they have to win them over with personality. The problem is, it's the same Peter Dutton, just on a different platform. By the way here, I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent. Have you actually looked at the Liberal Party's TikTok account? It's full of AI-generated songs, astroturfed influences, and Gen Z brain rot content, but with one major difference being that none of this content is organic. It's actually cooked up by a team of highly paid media staffers and advisors chasing online trends in order to get the algorithm to serve up their content in front of young, impressionable voters. To me, it's giving hello fellow kids vibes, but we can let the audience decide on that one. Look, this isn't just about one man awkwardly trying to fit in with Gen Z. It's about a broader strategy where liberals following the success of Labour are trying to harness the power of social media platforms that cater to the young, disenfranchised and politically unengaged. This is political influence wrapped up in memes, catchy music, and one minute videos. It's also no coincidence that TikTok is now a breeding ground for political spin. It's fast, it's viral, and there's no room for nuanced debate. The perfect environment for pushing simple, emotionally charged messages that bypass critical thinking. And with the Liberal Party's poor track record on transparency and accountability, this should be raising more alarm bells than it is. Now Dutton's TikTok debut is just one piece of the puzzle. Both political parties have been ramping up its presence on social media, pushing out AI-generated videos, meme-driven content, and a whole range of new tactics designed to grab your attention in a world where a 30-second TikTok can have more impact than a thousand policy papers. The question is how far are they willing to go to manipulate these platforms for political gains? And more importantly, how much of what you're seeing is real and how much of it is just digital spin? aimed at turning votes their way. Check out this TikTok from David Pocock. I can't believe what I've just seen. What I'm focused on is making a difference. And so today, following extensive consultation, I can confirm that my government will be introducing legislation into the parliament that will see a three year phased in complete ban on all forms of gambling advertising, digital and on TV, to protect the next generation of Australians. That video is fake, and there are currently no laws against making videos like that. And I'm concerned we're not seeing the urgency required to protect our democracy from generative AI. I got these videos made to push the parliament to take some action before the next election. As we can tell, there are no rules and regulations around this new technology. We are stuck in the past without a way to combat this disinformation. And it's only a matter of time before these types of videos will be used on the platform. Heck, it's probably already even happening. Dutton on TikTok isn't just an exercise in political irony. It's a clear sign of how desperate the Liberals are to win back the voters they've lost. But no amount of slick videos or cleverly crafted posts can hide the reality of their own policies. So next time you see a politician awkwardly dancing around on your feed, just remember, it's not about connecting with you, it's about controlling the narrative. And that, my friends, is where the real game is being played.
Thank you so much for joining me on this video, guys. This was a really interesting one to uh, write and produce. Um, if you like the work that we do, feel free to jump down in the description below where you can support us on Patreon. Uh, we are 100% community funded, which means that we have no big corporate donors or no big sponsorships. We are only paid by you, the viewers. So if you like what we do, chuck us a few bucks on Patreon.